boy says Naim, what does the decay of power say for China, for example? How, how, how does that affect China's uh, governance and uh, its uh, position in the world? If you try to measure which country in the world, which countries in the world have seen more of the three revolutions, China will be at the top. China has had a, a, a revolution of profusion of things. China not only has more people, but it has um, more wealth and has more product and has more of everything. And China also, the population has become more mobile, better informed, uh, more connected. And the changes in mentality in China are quite profound and significant. And we see them. We see ju it's just enough to walk the streets. Uh, of any of the of Chinese uh, cities, even the, the mid-level cities, um, to see the ch profound changes in that society. It's very hard to imagine that you have these tectonic changes in a society and nothing happening at the top, nothing happening in the way the country is governed. So there is a contradiction uh, between all of the f ferment and all of the effervescence that is taking place in society and the stagnation or the less, the lower dynamism that we see at the, at the, level, the way in which they govern. So you think eventually it's going to change the, the political system? One of the we have to give, and probably the, the way in which China is governed, will have to change to adjust and adapt and include the expectations and the needs uh, of a population that has been dramatically transformed by the more mentality and mobility revolution. Let me get you to talk about another region. What about Sub-Saharan Africa? Of course, they, you know, they were uh, under colonial rule, and these are new governments for the most part uh, coming up, trying to uh, implement democracy. What, does, uh, what are the implications of the decay of power for this new continent? First look again at the three revolutions there. This is a region that in, since 2000, the size of the Africa, Africa's economy has doubled. Africa's economy today is twice what it was just into the, that, that 13 years ago. Uh, the number of internet users has gone from almost nothing to 700 million. Uh, the, the number of countries that produce energy that have found oil or gas and are active players has gone from 5 to 17. Uh, so, you know, there is a lot going on in Africa that includes changes uh, in governance. Africa continues to have profound uh, difficulties and challenges with corruption, with kleptocrats uh, that get to government uh, to steal and not to govern. Uh, they have all a, a horrible colonial legacy that they are still struggling to get over with. But yet a lot is happening also there uh, in terms of, uh, again, that's another place where life for autocrats has become deeply uncomfortable. Can you make a generalization between how the decay of power is affecting either positively or negatively certain types of states? For example, is the decay of power more negative for democracies and maybe more positive for emerging uh, continents like Africa and maybe even more positive for China insofar as it would, would uh, open up the political system? I think they each suffer in their own way and uh, they each benefit in their own way. But the global trend, regardless of your regime, is that uh, there are a lot of things to welcome. There are a lot of very good things that benefit a continent, that benefit a country, that benefit uh, societies. And at the same time, all suffer from the downsides that we have been discussing.